I heard about a seven figure solopreneur uh, who has a team, so not really a solopreneur, but seven figure business who went bankrupt recently because they were basically getting new clients and students through ads like Facebook ads, Instagram ads, that kind of thing, which as you might know, I use a lot as well. And I, I recommend it. Um, it's helped my business a lot, but why did they go bankrupt? Even though they seem to be doing a good marketing strategy of, of um, I'm sure they had good copywriting and, and they were using ads a lot. Well, it's because uh, according to them, their advertising costs went up and even their ad agency couldn't figure it out. And so they went bankrupt. Now, I know most of you watching this are not seven figure businesses. So you're like, George, what are you talking about? Why is this important to me? Well, it's because the story um, teaches us an underlying assumption about marketing and how we grow our business that I think is applicable to businesses of all sizes. So my diagnosis for why that seven-figure business failed was uh, the following, and I, I took a few notes, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. Number one, uh, she didn't have a true fan base. Why? Because she was relying on ads, just like, oh, we'll just spend more money on ads, we'll get more people visiting our our website and get more leads for our business. It's so interesting. I keep getting people messaging me about, oh, would you like lower cost leads? And I'm like, dude, um, if you start talking about potential customers and clients as leads, you've already lost me. Uh, yes, leads, leads, L-E-A-D-S, is the technical term for a potential customer or client. But if you're looking at people as leads, you've already lost the heart connection with them. You're, no, you're now in this hyper sort of scientific and left brain way of dealing with your business and with your audience, which is not an authentic business because without that heart connection, you can't really build trust. You can manipulate people super well, can't build trust. So again, back to my diagnosis of why this business failed, didn't have a true fan base, was relying too much on ads to get leads rather than having resonant content that comes from a heart of service that creates real trust and real loyalty and therefore a true fan base. That's where marketing gets easier rather than for many people, it just keeps staying hard over the years. Marketing is supposed to get easier over the years, not harder, right? And your marketing is not getting easier over the years, then it's probably a relationship between alignment and trust. It's not about the reach. Reach is like you throw more money at running ads, you can reach a billion people. That's going to cost you a lot of money. But if you don't have trust with the people like they trust your expertise and they trust your values and if you don't have alignment between what you're selling and what they actually want then reach is pretty much useless so i've ta i've talked about this framework before the art framework art alignment reach and trust you kind of you kind of like need to build up all three to have a really authentic and sustainable business but with just using reach without really having a heart to build trust and without having a heart to talk to, to enough of them to find alignment between what you want to offer and what they want. You can't just be like, oh, I'm real so passionate about this modality. I'm so passionate about my peak experience. I'm so passionate about what I've studied. That I'm going to push it on you. George, just teach me how to run ads and, and I'm going to push it on people. No one's going to care. If you don't, shape your modality and 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 reframe your skills into what they actually want that they want to pay money for you can sell to them all day long and no matter how clever your copywriting and design is you're not going to sell anything or going to sell very little so um back to my my diagnosis of this uh, person so didn't have a true fan base was relying too much on reach and ads and also um her marketing was so aggressive which is how most marketing is. 
Right? If you learn marketing elsewhere besides me and maybe a few others, like you're going to learn the aggressive marketing that's pushy, that's trying to like get, okay, if I have something to launch, I'm going to talk about it 85 times and then the, I'll wear them down. It's like, sure, that works sometimes and it works for some people, but it's going to wear you down too. But not only that, it's going to erode trust with most of the people in your audience and your marketing is not going to get easier over the years. It's just going to stay hard. Um, so as a result of all this energy that she put towards her marketing, aggressive selling and using ads and all, all this energy money towards her marketing, guess what? She didn't have much energy left and time and money left to improve her product. And he ultimately... That is what makes marketing easier and easier over the years is that your product is so damn good. Your service is so damn effective and, and, it's re, and it's framed in a way that people want. You can have a really effective service, but you deliver it in a way that people don't want, then you're still not going to, you're not going to get enough clients. So that's why market research is super important. And also the, uh, the effort to keep improving your product or service to be so effective that people cannot ignore you. It's just so, it's so good. Um, so it's like she didn't spend enough time making her product so good that it created a sort of like an ongoing, loyal um, word of mouth uh, marketing engine. And so due to lack of repeat clients and customers because the product is not that good and lack of word of mouth, and you know, spending spending so much time and energy and money on just the reach aspect of it, trying to get more people to look at her website, and that was unsustainable. Ultimately, it failed. And so I, so then you you might say, well, George, I thought you always tell told us about ads and how important it is, and you run ads yourself. You spend you know lots of money on ads. Yes, I do. And let me tell you what ads are for. Ads are not to convince people. This is how I differ from most people who teach ads. Most people will say, well, ads, okay. It's to get your funnel opt-in in front of lots of people. And you got to make your funnel opt-in, the beginning of your funnel. It's already saying the word funnel is already messed up. It's like, how, it's, how, is that how you treat people? People, <laughs> is that how you treat your audience? looking at them as widgets to, to push through a funnel. So they eventually, they start out as a stranger. You push them through a funnel and they, be, they become a buyer. It's so damn cynical, people. I just, please, somebody who is a marketer watching this go, do you understand how cynical you are and how jaded and like not connected from the heart you are, dear marketer? It's like, how, like that's not how you treat your friends, right? then why the heck are you treating your audience that way? Because as I always say, authentic marketing is essentially uh, making friends at scale, making friends at scale. Yes, keeping good, good boundaries, but making friend or having friendliness happen at scale between you and your audience. I try to create a friendly audience by, well, showing my heart and really serving from the heart. I think you can hopefully tell and anyway, so it's like, so ads are not to, in my view, they're not for getting people into a funnel. It's a cynical, jaded, manipulative view. No, this is how I see ads. Ads are to amplify the value and service you are already providing and proving that you are providing to your audience and to your clients. Now, what I mean by that is not, oh, ads are to expand the, you know, the reach of your testimonials and your, your sales copy. No, no, it's not that. Well, yes, but that's not the main purpose of ads. The main purpose of ads, you spend money on Facebook and Instagram ads. And by the way, you don't need to spend much. Start with $30 a month, three zero. Most of you can do that. If you have a small business and you're not spending any money on advertising, you got to question whether you have a small business or whether you're serious about your small business. Really? Like, have you heard of any business that doesn't spend money on advertising? Well, they're probably not. They're either very lucky to have just enough word of mouth to get them enough clients, which is extremely rare. Or most of us need to spend some money on advertising 
to stay on top of mind and get enough business and get more than you know plenty of business so no it's it's frankly ridiculous that a business doesn't spend money on ads honestly i don't know where that idea is coming from if you're a business you spend money on ads period i mean really if you're not a, if, if you're not doing that you're not taking your business seriously you're not you're not so um like I said, uh, a, a few exceptions where they get all their clients, but you probably don't have enough clients. You don't have enough clients just from word of mouth, do you? Not yet until you use ads the right way. And then like at this point, at this point in my business, I could stop running ads and I would still be quite successful for indefinitely indefinite future because I have enough audience now that it, it would just sustain itself a very successful business just from word of mouth. It could happen. I still run ads because, let me tell you, ads is an amplifier of the value I provide to my audience. I'm explain. When I have a piece of content that my audience tells me is helpful, I make a post. People say, wow, that's helpful or that's inspiring. Okay, And typically that post does not sell anything. Look at most of my posts. Most of my posts don't sell a single thing occasionally they'll mention one of my courses or whatever but most of my posts go and look at my videos go and look at my text only posts most of them don't sell anything when my audience says it's good oh it's really helpful it's inspiring i spend money to get that piece of content out to more people to help more people regardless of whether they ever buy from me it's not a funnel they don't they're not you know i'm not asking for their email address that's be to be very clear. My ads do not ask for your email address. No, they don't. They get the content out there. I think of it as marketing as ministry. Marketing as ministry. I'm spending money on ministry money. I know it sounds ridiculous. George Mark Zuckerberg doesn't need any more money. This is ridiculous. I don't understand. But as a small fry, as as you know, as somebody who spends a pittance compared to the corporations on ads, the money that the little money I spend compared to big companies allows me to reach thousands of people per month to serve them with good content, even if the content doesn't sell anything. So I think of myself as making a difference by paying money to get the, the my best content out there. It shifts a little bit of people's minds. It shifts their heart towards a more helpful, productive, joyful way of thinking about business. Wonderful. And inevitably, obviously, some of those people decide to follow me or to look more, look at more of my content. And eventually, at some point, when if and when the timing is right for them, they will also see my posts about my offers, and then they will take me up on it. But, but so that's the point. Ads is ministry money that that's most of my money I spent on ads. It's just getting content out to, to people who might really benefit from it. I'm number one. And number two, I also use ads to occasionally make sure my warm audience sees my offers. And that's what I recommend that you do as well. Your ads, part of your money should go towards ministry money, meaning just cause. It's, your content is a cause. Your content could save someone's life. It could change someone's life. I don't know what kind of content you produce. Some of you are healers. Some of you um, say something that shifts their life in a way that it really makes a, a positive ripple effect that you can't even imagine. So most of our money, or at least half of it anyway, goes towards ministry money, just getting our message out and, and helping the world, number one. And number two is occasionally we also make sure that whatever we're promoting that month or that quarter your service, your course, your program, your event, that your warm audience, I'll make sure they see it at least once, just once or twice is enough. And this is where I want to say like, okay, some of you are running ads and on, on a particular offer and you're like, oh, I've heard George that you, someone has to see an offer like 13 times before they decide. Or, no, they don't. They see it once or twice and that's enough. From my experience, I've been doing ads now for just about 10 years actively. And from my experience, it's not 13 times. It's once or twice. Oh, but George, I always hear from people who tell me, 
oh, I, I wish I saw your offer. I didn't see your thing. That's why I didn't sign up. And then you're like, you get scared from that. Go, oh, I better, I better send more emails. I better run more ads. I better... That is terrible. Never, ever let someone who tell you that make you market more aggressively. Let me explain why. Well, George, don't we want to make sure everybody sees our thing one or once or twice? No, no. Let me explain. When I say I let my warm audience see it once or twice, I my warm audience, first of all, if you don't know my lingo, is are the people who have engaged with my content recently. They've liked, commented, shared my post. Running ads make this all easy because Facebook, Instagram tracks all this stuff. So say, oh, we, we know who, who engaged and we know who visited your website. We know who's on your email, all that stuff, right? So it's like, I make sure that my warm audience sees it once or twice on average, but not more than that. And yes, I'm sure there are always some people, some of you watching this don't realize I'm, I'm launching this or that right now. That's okay. Guess what? If you miss, so this is, this is the key point. If you miss something that I launch and you regret that you missed it, guess what's going to happen next time I launch something? You're going to lean in more. You're going to make sure you don't miss it. I'm not trying to make you feel FOMO. I'm just launching my regular stuff and I'm just gently getting the word out about it, You know, using some ads to make sure my warm audience on average sees it once or twice. Some people see it zero times. Some people maybe see it three times, but on average once or twice. Okay. And like I said, you might sometimes miss that I launched something. Guess what? You're more likely to lean in for my future launches. And that's what I want. I don't want you to go, oh my God, he had another you know, email from George about selling me this, selling me that, which is how I feel about most marketers. They're just like, they have to make sure I see their launch like three, four, five, or more times. And that's like, that is not helpful, helpful for audience trust. That is not helpful for the audience to lean in on of their own free will. So this is my, this has always been my perspective about marketing. Be, or once I got into authentic marketing, rather, be sought after rather than be someone that people have to kind of push away because you're marketing so aggressively. Be sought after, which means the trade-off is, yes, some people will always tell you, oh, I didn't see your thing. That's okay. Sometimes they're just making an excuse, honestly, right? Have you ever told a friend, oh, I didn't see your thing, but you didn't really want to sign up? Of course you have. Well, man, not by you, but many people have. So a lot of times that's just an excuse. And sometimes it's true. They didn't see it. They go, oh, you know what? That's okay. Here's my email list. If you want to join, then you're more likely going to see it next time. Be sought after. It's a, You're going to just assume there's a bunch of people who won't have seen it, but that's a good thing because that means you're marketing gently enough so that you build trust with the whole audience and you allow their free will to lean in. Again, I'm not I'm not being passive here, as you know. I'm not being passive and go, well, I just put something on my website and hopefully people see it. No, no, no. You know, I send, I send, get this, whenever I launch something, I send only two emails. This is unheard, not unheard of, but compared to my peers who send you three, five, 10 emails per launch, I send you two. Sometimes I only send one. The one I'm launching right now, I only sent one email. Dedicate one dedicated email about it. I also, I also sent a weekly email that had a mention at the bottom of it after my content at the bottom, a little brief mention. But that's it. You see how gently I launch things. And so I send one email, dedicated email, maybe two sometimes for a bigger thing. And then I also run ads to make sure most of my warm audience, several thousand people, see it on average about once, one and a half times actually. And then I turn it off. And some people won't have seen it. And, and some people will have seen it like twice. That's fine. And so basically, um, by treating my audience with respect and by continuing to enter my heart, to express my heart in my content and to be gentle with my launches, gentle yet active, gentle yet, um, you know, making sure I'm doing my part to gently announce it. It's a gentle announcement. Then my business has been, been really good, better and better over the years. Unlike this seven-figure marketer that I said who had to go bankrupt because you know, it was just lack of trust. 
huge amount of ad advertising costs that was very aggressive and pushy and cynical because it was all funnel driven. And I don't have a funnel. I don't. I let people choose. It's more like a menu of options. You get to choose. Some people, they, they find out about me and then next week they say, I want your highest level program. And some people, they find out about me and five years later, they buy my book. <laughs> they spend $5 five years later. That's fine. I let people go with their own organic timeline. And that kind of, tr that kind of trust in them and trust in you builds your trust in me. And this is why my marketing has gotten easier over the years rather than stay hard or be harder, as some people have discovered. So I hope this is helpful as a way to understand sort of like the difference between my overall strategy and values for marketing and how most people seem to do it, which is it's a hard life, <laughs> in my opinion. So I hope this is helpful. And thank you for watching.